Hello fellow Litas! I'm Ellie Vira, and I'm with you today for another Swolita review. Since I only have like 50 subscribers, I'm guessing most of you are new here, and if you are new, welcome. I hope you'll stick around. But if you're not new around here, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with me. What does it mean to be a Swolita? Well, in addition to being plus size and six feet tall, I'm also a weightlifter and bodybuilder because I'm training to become a pro wrestler. Lolita is not always the most compatible hobby with that. I struggle to find pieces that will fit my broad, broad shoulders and my big, big biceps. Today I have a review that I have been really eagerly waiting for. I ordered this item in June and it just got to me earlier this month in February. I am very excited to show it to you, but first I think we need a little backstory. In June of 2020, when the Black Lives Matter movement was coming to a head, the Lolita community was also discussing the Black Lives Matter movement. There was an especially big push to support Black creators within the community. And this led to a master doc, which included a whole bunch of not just Lolita, but also more generally J fashion and alt fashion brands that were created and run by BIPOC. One of those brands was Elegy Lolita, which has been known for mostly gothic pieces. When I'm window shopping for Lolita, I'll often keep a browser window specifically with a bunch of tabs open of stuff that I like. Elegy, and in particular the dress that I'm about to review today, was on one of those tabs. And when this list went viral within our community, I thought, what better time to go out on a limb, try out a new brand, and support one of our local artists of color. Unfortunately, Elegy, amongst many other brands on that list, were definitely not prepared for the influx of traffic and business they were about to get. Over the past six or seven months, I've seen tons of threads on Closet of Frills of people asking about Elegy as a brand, their reputation, the status of their orders, and a lot of people said that they canceled their orders when they realized they weren't going to actually ship in the four-week window that they had originally planned on. A lot of people said that they'd reached out to Elegy via email or on social media to try and get a hold of them and talk to them about the status of their order. It was a bit of a mess, but I was really excited for this OP, and while I was sitting around waiting for something to happen and any news to come out, I tried to put myself in the shoes of the brand's owner. I thought about what would happen if I suddenly got hundreds and hundreds of orders out of nowhere when I'm used to having one or two per month, maybe at maximum. And I realized that it would just take time. And I routinely put in pre-orders for MTOs for like Angelic Pretty and whatnot, and they take over a year very often. So I was going to give the same benefit of the doubt and trust to this indie brand that I would to this major brand in Japan. I didn't reach out to Elegy. I didn't want to waste their time with replying to my emails. And if a whole year had passed, I thought, okay, maybe that's the cutoff at which I would try to get a refund. But a year hasn't passed. It's only February 2021, and I placed my order in June of 2020. Friends, let me tell you, this OP was so worth the wait. And I am begging all of you, if you have put in an order with Elegy, do not give up on Elegy. If you were thinking of putting in an order but all the ruffle chat gossip deterred you from doing so, please, please, please reconsider. Elegy is an amazing brand, as I am about to show you. Their work is absolutely impeccable. Like, the details on this thing are just gorgeous and definitely on par with any major brand, indie or Japanese. Not only that, but this dress, amongst many others on the Elegy website, are slowly to friendly, and I will show you more about that in a minute. <laughs> So this OP is called the Chiffon Batty OP. I got it in the all black colorway because I wanted to try out Kuro Lolita and frankly I don't have that many pieces that are solid color, let alone any that are solid black. So this was a bit of a stretch for me style-wise, but I'm really excited to play around with it. Another unique thing about this is that it's this high-waisted kind of bag cut. I don't know what the technical term is. I've heard a lot of people refer to them as nightgown cut. Anyway, whatever you call it, nightgown cut, 
A-line, big bag. This cut is something I had never really tried. Every time I had tried it, specifically in Jellic Pretty and Innocent World, I've tried their cuts like this and they never looked right on me because they were definitely made for a smaller and shorter person and basically fit me like a poorly fitted t-shirt. This, however, is actual proper dress length for me at six feet tall. I've already tried it on once and I gotta say I'm so thrilled and excited to be able to do this video for you. Let me start by showing you some of the beautiful details on this dress. The reason it's called the Batty OP, as you can see, is this incredible bat collar, which, uh, just look at the craftsmanship. I sew and I can never get points for things like this that sharp. I just think it's so beautiful. Consistently done, top stitched down. This bow is attached with a pin back so it can be removed, making this even more versatile. The materials are actually a mix of several things here. We've got a solid color for the collar here. And then the sleeves, as you can see, are chiffon with really gorgeous finishing details. The elastic in this sleeve is so, so consistent and well done, and the lace is so delicate and so pretty and very soft and comfortable for a chiffon. Like this thing, very scratchy. This chiffon, very lovely. The body of the dress is also one layer of chiffon, but it has a darker lining material underneath, which is trimmed also with another very beautiful lace that I believe complements the sleeve lace very well. On the back, it's got an invisible zipper here. It's installed absolutely perfectly. So if everything goes according to plan, I should be showing you three different coordinates today. The first one is my first ever Kuro Lolita cord. That means head to toe, nothing but black. We're gonna lean into my namesake and get a little bit gothy. <laughs> Such a contrast to what I look like right now, but okay. The second coordinate, we're going to introduce a color. I'm thinking probably silver or white. We'll see, I'm gonna play around with it. And I'm going to wear a belt with that one so that you can see another way that this dress can be worn if you want to change the silhouette. And the third thing that I'm going to do is that JSK X O P challenge that I've been seeing everywhere on the internet where somebody wears their OP in place of a blouse and on top of their petticoat, almost like an underskirt and blouse combo with a JSK on top. I have a lot of JSKs that are really pretty short on me because I'm so tall and I'm hoping that this will be a fun way to style those. I haven't decided which JSK I'm going to coordinate with it quite yet. All right, now before my computer battery dies, I'm going to start getting changed. Alrighty, let's talk about this first look. You can see that I have left the silhouette of the dress as it is with the big A-line shape starting from the top of my bust. Underneath, I've got a Me Likes T A-line petticoat. My shoes and tights are off-brand. My gloves came from the Lolita Collective. I have these gloves in three colors and I adore them. I've also accessorized with my grandmother's vintage velvet hat and my mother's 80s vintage bell spider earrings. The wig I've chosen is an off-brand split wig. I'm a big fan of supporting your local wig and beauty shops for wigs instead of ordering them from China. This look is super simple and it's not exactly where I thought I was going with this, to be honest. I had thought I'd go for a more traditional goth sort of thing, but as I was playing around with my accessories, the second I put this hat on, I thought, oh my gosh, this is super Jackie O. I'm gonna go with the vintage inspired Kuro look. The gloves kind of add to that vintage feel and you can tell that the gloves are made of a lo much lower quality material than the see-through on the sleeves. The spider earrings are the littlest bit of silver, but I don't even care because look, they're little bells. In a way, this is the Ellie Vira quintessential look. A little bit colorful, a little bit spooky, a little bit vintage inspired, overall quirky and cute. I really like the way that the spider earrings play off of the back collar 
and that both of those stay witchy in theme with my fishnet stockings which have pentagrams on them. So I've managed to keep it witchy but also vintage. I've seen some flapper Lolita, I have definitely seen a lot of 1950s, 1960s Lolita, and so along that vein I'm trying to go for a vintage silhouette here. Now I only wish I knew how to make this beret stay on my head better because every time I think I've gotten it in the perfect position it shifts. My grandma had a tiny head and I have a big head and I'm wearing a wig so it's kind of a helpless case. Next I'm going to add a belt and switch some things around and we'll see what comes out next. Look number two is actually even further out of my comfort zone than look number one. A belt has been added to my waist. I believe this belt came from Bodyline Tokyo back when I was living in Japan. As you can see, belting this dress in the middle gives it a completely different silhouette, which, while also kind of vintagey, is also super Lolita cupcake skirty. For this look, I tried to bring in different metallics, specifically silver, white, and a little bit of gold, just because I don't have enough silver or gold on their own to really be a focus for the accessories. This is the first time I've ever attempted a peaking bloomers look. The bloomers are off-brand, and uh, I think I might be too tall for these bloomers to peak properly, so hopefully they look okay. The shoes this time around are Bodyline Tea Parties, and the socks are from the Lolita Collective. On my wrists, I have some homemade wrist cuffs with fake freshwater pearls. I've also got my handmade resin cast wing rings. For the top of the dress, I have removed the neck bow that came with the dress, and I've replaced it with a jabot which came off of a bodyline blouse set, and I've added just a little brooch, which came with one of my high newly dresses, as a little bit of extra interest. It looked silver when I was indoors putting everything together and it looked fine, but looking at it now, it's very clearly not silver. It is brassy gold. Uh, oh well. Better luck next time. For headwear, I've got my Angelic Pretty Magic Amulet Veil, and on top of that, an off-brand crown that I bought on Etsy. My wig this time around is another one from the local beauty supply place. This coordinate is so far outside of my comfort zone. In fact, I kind of feel uncomfortable in it. Not because of the dress itself, but because it turned out looking a lot more religious than I intended. And I'm Jewish, so I definitely don't want to look like a nun ever. Uh, this veil however definitely makes me look like a nun and I didn't help things any by adding an actual like holy Jesus crown but you know lesson learned however I do kind of want to give this another go with specifically white and black and no silver or metallic accessories the white and black socks and shoes with this dress and the jabot look really really cool in my opinion I think if I had a white belt and a black and white head bow perhaps, or even a slightly less religious-y looking veil or something, maybe a white veil to be more bridal. That would be really fun. Overall, this is a little bit arrow, a little bit weirdly Catholic. Look, they can't all be winners, right? At least I tried something new, and I did illustrate for you that this dress can be worn with the belted waist, so mission accomplished there. All that's left to try now is the OPX JSK challenge. Alright, still in the dress but out of most of the rest of the cord. And uh, let's find a JSK to wear over this baby. My first instinct is to do something pretty simple. This is Gingham Sharing by Angelic Pretty. And I think it would look pretty nice. Um, that said, it is long enough that the skirt's not really going to poke out the bottom. So I think for the purposes of this test, um, this would not be my first choice. I actually find Honey Cake to be really short on me as well. I could halter it and have the collar right here kind of peek over the top. That said, Honey Cake doesn't really have black in it, mm, at least not very much, so I don't know if it's going to coordinate super well with this, so again, probably not my favorite choice that I put on the back burner. I actually think my Magic Amulet would be the perfect choice for this, but since it's got a bust of 108 centimeters and I've got a bust of 116, it means I have to change my bra, and I just don't have the energy for that, frankly, so I will keep that in mind for later, because I mean, 
hello, that will look amazing. Not today, not today. I like this bra, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we may have a winner here. This is Bake Sweets Parade Special Set. Um, I have never worn it before. Uh, while it doesn't have any black on it, it is so super short that I've been in need of some sort of underdress for it anyway. Let me throw this on and see how it looks. Interesting. So indeed, you can kind of see the collar over the top. Okay, so I guess we have a winner. I'm gonna go put a real cord together around this and I will be back to you. Now this third coordinate looks much more like me and is way more in my comfort zone, despite the fact that I've never done this OP under JSK thing before. I've got my Baked Sweets Parade special set JSK layered over the OP, and aside from a little bit of bunching up happening from the body of the dress underneath getting caught around my armpit area, I would say that it doesn't really look like I'm wearing an OP under a JSK, but it does give me this really fun collar to pair with something that would usually not go with a gothic OP at all. <laughs> I've re-added the bow from the Batty OP to the front of the bow of the Big Sweets Parade JSK. I've paired it with some off-brand thigh-high stockings, this fabulous pair of My Violet Pink Witch boots, a BB and B macaron necklace, these interspecies friendship earrings from Lolita Collective, my dawn and morning dew wrist cuffs, and some candy heart rings that I made myself. And I've topped it all off with the bow from the JSK special set, a little black velvet bow, and my spicy donuts pink donut beret. I also really like the wig that I've paired with it. This is another beauty supply store wig. If you look closely, it's got tinsel in it. Yeah, now you can see the tinsel. I know a lot of people find tinsel wigs to be a little obviously wiggy, but I don't know. I just think this is the perfect shade of pink and the little tinsel adds an extra element of fun to it. One thing I gotta say is that wearing these two dresses in combination makes it really, really warm. I feel like I'm sweating off all my makeup right now sitting in front of my filming light, but it is what it is. From some angles, you can't really tell that this is a JSK over an OP, but from some you can, and I think it's pretty fun. And I think for what it is, it turned out pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite of the three coordinates. I also have to say that I'm not super happy with the footage and photos I got of this just as my partner and I went out. It started raining and I was like, no, not my bra. So we ran back inside. While all three looks were really great, I think my personal favorite has to be the first one because that silhouette was what this dress was made for. and. It looks incredible doing exactly what it was designed to do. I do still tend to lean towards color, which is what attracts me to sweet and classic Lolita, but I have a lot of gothic pieces, and this may be the most gothic piece in my wardrobe at this point since it is all black and has a built-in back collar. As far as the way the dress fits, it's got quite enough room in the shoulder for me and in the bicep. When I placed my order, I just submitted my bicep measurement, and while my biceps are bigger now than when I ordered, it still had plenty of stretch, and I do feel like it fits me very well as intended, in spite of putting myself through many, many layers and many quick changes. This OP is super duper comfortable. Hmm, I think I'm gonna change out of Big Sweets Parade and just wear the OP on its own for the outro. Ah uh, yes, as Bag of Chips would say, much better. So yes, what else can I say about Elegy? They are a fantastic brand. I would definitely say that this OP was worth the wait and that the designer is someone we can trust and believe in, even if she has to work at a slowish pace. It is so clear to me that she cares so deeply about her customers. When I opened the package, the first thing that I saw was a handwritten note, and I will read that for you now. Ellie, thank you so much for your order and support of my work. I'm so sorry for the way long wait, and I really do appreciate your patience. I hope you love your dress and thanks again. And I do, I really love this dress. <laughs> it was worth the wait. Another thing that they sent is this little postcard and this is actually a coupon for my next order, which reads, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You've waited so long for your order. Here's $50. 
Use it on any order in the future for anything. Never expires. I so appreciate your support and I can't begin to explain how sorry I am for the long wait. Thanks for sticking with me. You're welcome. And thank you. So with this, I am definitely going to be putting in another order. It's just a matter of time. I'm going to wait until things settle a little bit and she can get through her backlog before burdening her with another order. But I gotta say, I am super duper happy with this. I will definitely be a lifelong LG Brown supporter. And I encourage every plus size Lolita or Swolita or Gothic Lolita who is interested in this sort of thing, definitely check them out. Like I keep saying, it is so worth the wait. You will not regret it. I'm actually filming this on Valentine's Day, so uh, I guess this is what I'm wearing for a date with my spouse. <laughs> My kitten was screaming, I had to bring her in here. What do you think, Kenny? Next video, we do Doze and Cat Hakama. You and I will dress up together because you look just like the kitty from that print. All right, well, I have been Ellie Vira. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll give this video a like if you found it interesting or useful. And I hope you'll subscribe and stick around for more reviews. I really like this format that I've been doing where I pick a dress and then I coordinate it three ways. I think that's going to be a staple of my channel, especially as I get more new releases in. And I think this is going to be a lot easier to do with JSKs than with OPs. So uh, stick around for those. I'm trying to grow my channel, so if you give me a subscribe, that would be a huge, huge help to me. Uh, I'm waiting for that 100 subscriber mark so that I can get my custom URL. I really want youtube.com slash virus. So help a girl out. Bye.